Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Ministers, dear Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and the ruler of Dubai. As well as His Excellency, uh, Mohammed Al Gargavi, Minister of Cabinet Affairs and um, the future of the UAE. For their extraordinary partnership with the World Economic Forum that enabled the launch of the first edition of this meeting exactly 10 years ago in 2008. As you might have learned already, the theme of our annual meeting in Davos this January will be Globalization 4.0, shaping a global architecture in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. The new wave of globalization to which it refers, which is driven by the fourth industrial revolution, coined by our founder and executive chairman, Professor Klaus Schwab, is taking place at an unprecedented pace. It took 75 years to reach 100 million people with landlines. You remember the landline? The iPhone was launched in 2007. No, there are 2 billion users of the iPhone. Globalization cannot be stopped, but it can be improved. It should be more inclusive, it should be more sustainable, and it should be more job-creating. This is of even greater importance today when change is taking place at unparalleled speed driven by the fourth industrial revolution. For this purpose, uh, the World Economic Forum has also established its global network of the fourth industrial revolution, which is uh, partnering with governments, leading companies, civil society representatives, and relevant experts like yourself from around the world to co-design a pilot, innovative, new approach to policy and governance in this area. We also need traffic rules when it comes to the new technologies. In the forum's regional risks for doing business report that we will present tomorrow, cyber attacks are the number one risk in three out of eight regions covered. As such, it is clear that we need to do more to protect our digital infrastructure and bolster cybersecurity using a collaborative approach. If this is not achieved, you can imagine how dire the consequences would be in a world of self-driven cars, smart electricity grids, and drone deliveries. That's also why the World Economic Forum has now established a cybersecurity center that is also multi-stakeholder in Geneva. Globalization's future is not any longer about physical trade. It is about knowledge, information, and technology. Digital trade already accounts for 12% of international trade. And data flows are predicting to increase another five-fold by 2022. If you look at the digital period that we are in, we are only at the early stage of it. There are many things we are not thinking about yet. Let's face it, in many of the largest, many of the largest companies of the world didn't even exist 20 years ago. 
the young people of today will probably have 10 different jobs during their career. Seven of them don't even exist at this point. Let's not be shy about the results of a more integrated world and of global value chains. Since 1990, global GDP has doubled, driven by increased global trade that has soared by a factor of four over the course of the period. Trade has been an engine for growth. Hence, let's upgrade trade, not give up trade. In the same period as I referred to, we have seen the number of people living in extreme poverty in the world, going from 40% of the global population lived in po extreme poverty in 1990. Today, it's almost 10%. This was, on top of it, realized in a period when we grew from 5 billion people to 7 billion people worldwide. We added more people since 1990 than lived on our planet in 1900. There is a lot of talk about trade wars. Trade is not a weapon. Trade can do, trade can to the contrary, be a strong force for inclusive, poverty, eradicating growth. In that spirit, we will convene a series of dialogues at the highest level in Davos to shape a new framework of global cooperation that is adapted to this new context. That is why the deliberations you will have within your councils over the next two days are so important. As we are relying on your input to frame these important dialogues that we will facilitate at our annual meeting in Davos. As for our summit that we open today, the annual meeting of the Global Future Councils is the biggest brainstorming in the world. This year, we are convening 38 councils who will look at a spectrum of issues ranging from agile governance and innovation ecosystems to the new social contract and euro technologies. So we are um, really gathered for a great brainstorming. I know that we will have um, substantial uh, outputs. And on that note, I would like to hand over the floor to my dear friend, Minister Gargavi, for his remarks. Thank you. Shukra. I'll be speaking in Arabic, if you can put your headset, please. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Mr. Bouge Brandy, President of the WEF, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may God's prayers and blessings be upon you all. It is my pleasure to welcome you all on the occasion of uh, the inauguration of the annual meetings of the Global Future Councils organized by the government of the UAE in cooperation with the World Economic Forum. And uh, we are quite glad to celebrate this event uh, on the 10th anniversary of our partnership, 10 years uh, of strategic cooperation between the government of the UAE and the World Economic Forum, 10 years of cooperation that have led to numerous global reports, policies, initiatives, and dialogue rounds that have directly affected 
the track of global development. And we are happy today to host 700 futurists and experts as well as entrepreneurs that will take part in 38 councils in the different sectors of interest and of relevance to development at the global level. Throughout this session, we shall forecast global developments that our world will be facing in the future and how to deal with them. His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum would say, life offers you two paths, follow or innovate. The future will be in the hand of uh, those who can imagine it, design it, and execute it. And for that, we have been always keen on unveiling what the future beholds. How can we imagine it? And how can we affect it and design it today? Ladies and gentlemen, some may wonder, why do we care so much about future issues, well, simply because it's about caring about the fate of 7 billion people. And answering the questions of the future is answering the questions asked by millions of youth around the world about uh, the type of education they have, about the jobs they will uh, uh, do, and uh, about how they can potentially achieve their dreams. Today, when we look at the economy of the world and witness the global technological advances according to global reports, holding opportunities estimated at about $70 trillion for the next 10 years, then we ask, how could governments and peoples reap the benefits from all of these great opportunities and prepare for them properly? Perhaps. Our conference today would bring us some answers to these questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me as well to talk about uh, a number of uh, priorities that govern governments around the world uh, need to work on today in order to be better fitted to embark on the future. And I will tackle precisely four priorities first, uh, to shape the future in a participatory fashion. Governments around the world today cannot monopolize the shaping of the future because they will only accumulate delays and will relay and depend or rely on depend on very limited resources in building their policies. And this is why His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has always been keen on involving everyone the youth, the private sector, and international experts in bringing about these policies, and most importantly, in order to benefit from the latest advancements in terms of megadata, social interactions, and IE analyses in order to develop a better participatory policy today. We have moved from the individual mind to the collective mind, supported by the latest technologies to a great extent. As for the second priority, it is to design proactive legislations in an orderly and systematic fashion. As the cumulative effect of legislations that are not updated around the world amount to about $4 trillion. And if this was the budget of a state, it would have been among the richest in the world. Today, we have read in Emirati newspapers about the decision taken by His Highness, the President of the state, on launching the first legislative lab in the world with the objective of 
turning the UAE into a laboratory for testing future legislations on modern technologies beyond the regular legislative and bureaucratic sessions of the government in order to be the fastest government in the field and in order to test and formulate legislations of interest to all the governments in the world, like legislations related to self-driving vehicles, 3D printing or genomics or others technologies that governments around the world are still trying to understand to assimilate all of their legal implications as well. As for the third priority, it is to enhance the government's productivity and efficiency around the world, whereas studies show that the uh, technological transformation in governments would uh, boost uh, the productivity of services to at least 20 percent. The UAE, according to international reports, is today the most efficient in the world in terms of financial spending. It is also the most efficient in terms of the technological use, and there is a clear nexus between both indicators. However, productivity and efficiency are not simply an objective, but uh, they are, as uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed has said, uh, part of a continuous journey of advancement and modernization, namely in order to promote uh, productivity, which is uh, key to uh, speed up the development uh, process in all states and governments. As for the f uh, uh, fourth priority, it is on globalization. His Excellency has uh, raised the issue of globalization, and today we see that some states have actually started to distance themselves from the concept as a whole and uh, are rather resorting to the concept of protectionism. However, we believe that the world has reached a point of no return in terms of globalization. Today, we are witnessing the globalization of data, the globalization of education and knowledge, the globalization of talents, but also the globalization of ideas. Thanks to glo the globalization, the entire global economy has changed uh, and uh, we have greater opportunities uh, and uh, without globalization we wouldn't uh, have seen uh, the emergence of trillion uh, dollar worth companies like Apple, Amazon and many other sectors that uh, are sharing uh, the knowledge with the world. Uh, these uh, corporations have succeeded as uh, no state has shut its doors uh, uh, in front of them and are part of the participatory economy. And today, no country will be able to shut its door to all types of information, services, knowledge, and talents. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, during uh, the global future council meetings, we're going to attempt and find clearer and better answers to challenges that are imposed by future issues. We shall work as a united task force in order to contribute even modestly to achieving the upcoming development goals of humanity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is keen on making sure that the UAE will always remain an annual stop to all and a hub for discussions and dialogue in order to benefit humanity as a whole. And it will remain an open laboratory for everything that's new and novelty. Once again, you're almost welcome to the UAE. And we highly value your efforts in shaping a better future for the world and humanity. May God's prayers and blessings be upon you all. Thank you um, so much, uh, Minister uh, Gergabe, uh, Your Highnesses. I think we can easily agree uh, that there is no better place for this brainstorming than we are uh, now given Dubai's agile and forward-looking policy making and its general commitment to human-centric development. I hereby have the great honor to officially declare the annual meeting of the Global Future Councils for OPED. <laughs>